this video will continue to look at settings so let's go into settings and in this video I'm going to look at uh, sounds brightness and wallpaper picture frame and privacy so let's start with sounds and sounds controls all sounds that all your apps and the actual iPad itself will use at the top here you can uh, moderate the sound of your ring as an alert so if you want it really higher turn it up or just have it you know, wherever it's wherever you want it um, the ring tones and the text tones all that stuff you can set so for, for sent mail for example there's a, a sound you can select when the mail message is sent so I like the swoosh but you can pick whichever one you want so just spend a bit of time going through them all every time you touch one it will give you a little bit of a, a demo on what it is I'm going to stick with swoosh so for each element there so if you use Twitter when you send a tweet what sound will the tweet make for a Facebook post that you post I have the same one so maybe I'll, I'll change it to something different for Facebook uh, calendar alert so when there when there is a calendar event that is being uh, pushed down to you the at the moment the bell sound I'll change it to anticipate uh, and reminder alert so you have a little play with it all the different sounds that you can use to alert you for various applications uh, keyboard clicks if you turn that on then and we go back to an application that actually uses the keyboard so it's fine notes and put the keyboard up and the keyboard is clicking which can be very annoying so if you don't want that to to occur and go back to settings you can turn the keyboard off so if we go back to notes again and type the keyboard is now silent so um, and lock sounds leaving on so there's not a lot in sounds but it's sort of a way that you can you can personalize what you want to do um, let's look at brightness and wallpaper auto brightness if I turn that on then the iPad will manage the brightness of the screen and it will do that in order to conserve battery it might not be so bright so auto brightness might have the screen at that level and and for me this is a personal thing I like my screen to be quite bright and I'm and I'm no, I don't like it when it's a little bit faded just for for the sake of a bit of battery so I turn that off and I like to manage it myself so you can manage that setting from here the other way you can look at brightness is if you go into the multitasking bar so three finger swipe up there is also brightness here so you can adjust it at, at that point as well and then tap to get back so to, to the multitasking bar a two taps on the, the home screen will bring it up and then you scroll to the left or if you have multitasking gestures turned on three finger swipe up and then scroll will also bring you to the multitasking bar um, for the wallpaper you can have two types of wallpaper you can have uh, an image that is just there when you turn the lock screen on so if I put my iPad to sleep and put, turn it on that is the lock screen and that's just an image of a, a Windows blue screen of death that I like to have for my lock screen and as soon as I slide to unlock uh, and go back to the home screen that's the other wallpaper the, the wallpaper with the little bubbles of water is the wallpaper for the, the screens of apps and you can have the same one for everything so if I went back to settings and I went into this one and I wanted to change the wallpaper I can change the wallpaper from any of my photo albums or the camera roll I can pick a picture or I can pick the wallpapers that come with the iPad which is what I've currently got or I can just pick the same picture that I've currently got if I can find I've got so many pictures here it's very hard to find one so let's just pick let's pick 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 something pick the flower 
So that flower is now going to be the picture for my home screen and my lock screen. I'm going to set it for both. So set for both. Go back to the home screen and now I've got the pic the flower is at the background. If I turn the screen off and turn it on, it's also the picture for the lock screen. So you can have the same one for both of them. I tend to find the, um, the background image on the the home screens uh, has to be fairly bland because it's just too hard to read the apps. So to change it, we'll go back and back to the lock screen and try to find that picture of the blue screen of death, which is somewhere in this vast collection. There it is. That's the one I want as the lock screen. And my home screen is still set with that flower so I would have to go back and uh, back into this one and select a wallpaper just something quite innocuous so this one just just got the little bubbles and that's my home screen and when I go back to the home I can read everything again so this is um, an opportunity if you have uh, pictures of family or or your pets that you want to have displayed on your iPad or on your, on your lock screen or your home screen on both, this is where you change it. Uh, so speaking of pictures, the picture frame. This is the setting where you can set up your picture frame. When you have your iPad asleep and you turn it on, this button in the, in the bottom right here is the picture frame. And if I tap that, it will start whatever album I've allocated to the setting it will start that display of images. And I think I've set it for each picture to last 10 seconds. And if there are people, to zoom in on the face. And the transition is dissolve. So it's just going to keep going through. So you can use your, your iPad as a very expensive picture frame and just have it sitting there on the, uh, on the sideboard or the bench watching all your pictures. So if you want to set the uh, parameters for that up, go back in and into, so we'll go back to where we should be, into settings, picture frame. And these are all the settings for that picture frame. So I have the uh, transition set as dissolve, and I'll change it to origami. Each photo 10 seconds, or I might change that to maybe 3 seconds, and go back. Uh, if there are any faces, zoom in on the faces as selected as on. Um, I want the photos to be shuffled so that it is a surprise what comes up. And then you decide, well, where are the photos coming from? Are they going to come from your whole camera roll, in which case you'd put all photos? Your photo stream, if you have iCloud turned on and photo stream turned on, or a specific album. And I think in this case I've selected a specific album as, as to where I want them to come from. And that's all the settings there are. You can't, in this case, have music playing with this. Um, slideshow, you can do that as part of the Photos app, but you can um, only show the pictures. So if they're the settings, put the computer back to sleep, turn it on, start the, the um, picture shot, show, and this time the transitions are origami and three seconds each picture. And it's very fast, three seconds. And origami is just... Uh, Know, all sorts of different you know, aspects and you know, wonky. Don't like it at all. And then as soon as you touch the screen, that will stop, and then you can slide to unlock. And now I have to go back and reset everything. Um, privacy. Something new in iOS 6. So if we tap privacy, uh, and this is where you can set up how other apps are going to be able to uh, get access to your information. So the ones that are here, location services. So everything uses your location because your iPad has a GPS so you can be found and a lot of apps need to use that information to be able to work properly. So sometimes you'll get a message that says, uh, allow access to your location. If you don't say yes, then that app cannot be cannot work at its most efficient. 
uh, and it's and you you may as well not use it. Uh, privacy, you know, it's a very personal thing, but for some apps, you do need to have your your location accessible. So the in the middle here are all the apps that I have that are using my um, location and that I've given permission to. Some of them I, I've said no, and whether that's an oversight or I just haven't got round to it, but most of them I just say yes. iMovie is off, but only because I probably haven't used it yet. So for most of the apps I'd say yes, you can use my location because I want that app to work well. So location services are turned on. And they use your GPS, as it, says, as it says here, with any and along with any other Wi-Fi hotspot that's around cell tower locations. So back to privacy. There are more specific apps that need to use your data. So for the contacts apps, uh, there are three apps that I have on the iPad that need access to the contacts and that I've given permission for. So for Skype, for example, um, needs to be able to. Um, know who my contacts are if it's going to be able to provide the best um, usage for me. Um, same with calendars. This stage there are no apps I have that needs to use my calendar. Um, reminders are similar, nothing. Photos, there'll be a lot of apps there that need to use the Photos app. They need to draw the photos and use the photos that are in your camera roll and save things back to the camera roll in order to work. Uh, so Facebook, for example, if I want to connect my iPad to Facebook then I, and I want to put photos up there, then I have to give it access to my Photos app. If I say no, then I, I have no way I'm going to get any photos onto my Facebook account from the iPad. Uh, Bluetooth sharing, no apps have requested that. And again, Twitter and Facebook, they're now integrated into the iPad, but you still can opt in or out. So again, you have to be very clear about how you want to use the iPad and as to how much privacy you need and how much you're willing to share. Uh, is there anything else here we could look at? Do not disturb. Something new in the iOS 6. At the moment, it, its default is off. If I turn that on, and you notice up on the top near the uh, time is a little half moon to indicate that do not disturb is on. It works differently to a phone, to the iPhone, uh, than to the iPad. But what it will do is not send notifications to your iPad. While you have that switched on, you're not going to get uh, notifications coming at all no times of the day. So if you have your iPad near you at night, Every time you get a notification from a from a game or an app, it's going to light up the screen, it's going to make the sound, it's going to wake you up. This way it will turn that off until you turn it back on. Uh, on the phone, it's a little bit easier to control because you can set up times. Um, that, I think, will be all for this video.